One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen exam papers later, and I got a grade A in A level maths. and welcome back to a brand new video. So for today's video, I am going to be telling you how I got a grade A in A-level maths and what you can do to get top grades as well. Now, A-level maths is a really tough course and you've got to do maths in order to get good grades. You've got to keep practicing the maths throughout the course and it's not just enough just to attend lessons and do the work. You have to do a lot more outside of the lessons as well. That's for A-levels in general, but especially for maths. Now to succeed at any A-level course, you've got to revise. And um, it's quite hard to find the best way to revise for maths. So what I did is I tested out loads of different ways, whether that be exam papers, flashcards, making new notes, revising in groups, revising on my own. And, and to test all those revision methods out, what I did was just revise the things that I didn't know. Because there's no reason to revise things that you do know, you've got to revise the things that you didn't know. So what I would do is I would revise topics that I struggled at most and then worked my way down to topics that I was okay at but needed just a little bit of practice on. So for example, anyone who knows me knows that mechanics isn't my strongest point of math. So I would try to do mechanics first and get all my mechanic provision out of the way and then go on to pure maths and statistics. To revise the mechanics, I'd start with the stuff that I didn't know and then move on to the mechanics that I did know and then do the stats and pure. Now you can learn in so many different ways. I really like watching videos. I would use example questions because I like to see how to actually do the question first before I have a go at it so that I can have a go at it and get it right. Because what I would try and do is I would try and do some examples and then I'd get really frustrated because I couldn't do it if I hadn't seen an example prior to doing the question. So if that helped you, then have a look at an example first and have a go at a question. During my A-level maths, I found exam papers the best way to revise. And I've said this on my channel before, and I've said it on my Instagram as well, but that's what you're going to be tested on in the real exam. So what I would do is, after I've learned a topic, I would try to, as soon as possible, do exam questions on that topic. That way, your knowledge is fresh in your mind, and you can go back, and if you're struggling with something, look in the notes that you've just made, or the flashcards that you've just made. What I would do personally is I'd go back and look at questions because I didn't really use my notes that much in A-level maths. I have got four folders here on the bookshelf full of maths notes but I rarely really use them. I did them in class and I marked them but then I just put them away in my folder because notes to me I didn't use that much. Then once I'd finished an exam paper, I would mark it myself using the mark scheme online. And if you can't find a mark scheme online, you can always ask your teachers and they might have one um, that you can't access, for example. So what I would do with the mark scheme is I would go through and I would really criticize my solution because that's what the examiner is going to do when they're marking their paper. So don't be lenient to give yourself a mark there because you think you'd get a mark. If it doesn't explicitly say on the mark scheme that you're not going to get a mark there, don't give it yourself because it's not going to happen in the exam. And then what I would do is I would add up my marks at the end and see what I got. And if you keep doing that, each exam paper, you should see that your grades slightly increase. And if you do that with enough time before the exams, your grade should increase to what you want it to be before you sit your real exam. Now, it sounds a bit boring just sitting and doing an exam paper, and it's not the most fun, let's be honest. So you don't have to sit there in silence and do the exam paper. What I would do is I would talk out the solutions to myself, to myself. To myself. Um, and what's really useful is to have a whiteboard. There's a one on the wall behind you. And that's where I would do some of my solutions. If I could do it straight away on the paper, I would do it and get it done and move on to save time. But if I thought this was a question that I really needed work with, 
I would put the paper aside and I'd have a go on the whiteboard first. And I would talk out what I was doing as if I was teaching someone else. And I found that really, really useful because I had to say it right because you're not able to teach it someone else wrong because that would not be good. So I would talk it out and I would highlight where I was struggling. So if I stop talking, for example, that's a point where I need to work on. And I would highlight that and then do some revision on that. Then I'd go back to the question and see if I could answer it from there. You can give yourself time on the exam paper. So if you're gonna do the exam paper quite strict, give yourself an hour and a half to do the paper. Or if you just want to see how long it takes you to do the paper, then just time yourself but if you pass an hour and a half, don't worry. You just know that you need to be quicker in the exam. And with practice, I got much better at working under pressure. It's really hard to create that atmosphere of an exam. So don't worry if you do work over time because when you're under pressure anyway, you will work faster in the exam. But saying that, watch out for silly errors. My teacher says all the time that I make silly errors and I think I make silly errors as well. And we have to work together on that, not making silly errors. So just by practicing your maths and working and really understanding what you're doing will help you. And really understanding what you're doing by revising will help you block out all those silly errors. Now, I sat my A-level maths in a year, so I was taught everything in the A-level specification in a year. So we moved on really, really quickly. Now, I don't know whether you're doing that or if your college is doing it over two years, but either way, you have to revisit topics. You have to go back on topics and revise them while you're learning new topics. So what I would do is I would be learning something in class and then if I was free or at home, I would try and cover maybe one chapter in a week that we did two months ago. Because that way I'm not forgetting what we did two months ago whilst learning something new. And that really, really helped me because as I got closer to my exams, I wasn't trying to cram everything in at the end. Now I don't know how big your A-level class is, but usually they are smaller than GCSE classes and mine was as well. I think there was about 19 in my class. So make sure that you ask a question as soon as it comes into your head. I used to do that, I still do that, and there's no shame in asking a question because if you don't ask the question and you never ask the question, you'll never get an answer to it and that might come up in your exam and you're stuck because you haven't asked the question. Put your hand up ask the teacher and I'm sure they'll be willing to answer it for you. And remember as well, someone else might be thinking the same question, so you're not just helping yourself out, you're helping someone else out as well. Now you have to be really organised to succeed at any A-level you do, but especially with maths. So let me show you my four folders. Here are all my exam papers that I did. Here's one folder, here's another folder, here's another folder that's not that full of work, and here's another folder. So four folders that covered two years of A-level maths. What I did is I had a folder for stats and mechanics, which is the applied side of maths, and I had a folder for pure maths. And I would split my work up into year one, so the AS maths, and then year two, the A-level maths. And that really, really helped me. Now, I didn't use my notes that much for revision, but if I needed to go back to class notes, for example, I had dividers in my folders and I could go back straight to that section if I wanted to see an exam question or an example that my teacher did. Hopefully this video has helped you. If you've got any questions, you can let me know in the comments and I will answer them as soon as I can. Make sure you go and follow me on my maths Instagram at I Need Help With Maths because I cover GCSE and A-level maths questions and reminders where you can save them or screenshot them. And I will see you very, very soon for another video. Bye.